Hello, welcome to the part 3 of the UI path document understanding solution architecture series. So, in the first few parts, we looked at why the document understanding framework is important and we also looked at how to set it up as a quick start and run, run a process for invoices. So in this part, we will look at the configuration. So just like in the RE framework where you have a configuration file, here also in the document understanding framework, we do have a configuration file that we will be using. But this configuration file is slightly different than what you see in the RE framework. So this one you can find in the in the document understanding template under the data folder. So I already have it open in my Excel. So in the default configuration file, you will see five tabs, settings, constants, assets, invoice processing, and another sheet for receipt processing. So we will look at what, uh, what settings we have in each sheet so starting with the settings sheet here we have several properties so the items that is highlighted in yellow here all these are the folder paths and endpoints so all these are default settings the temporary folder path is where the documents will get downloaded from the action center and uh, all the documents or the, or the exported results from the document understanding uh, execution, those will get saved in this exports folder. And all the trainings related to receipts and invoices, those information will get saved inside these respective folders, depending on the document that you're running. Um, so, a point to add here is if you have other document types like purchase orders or, or bank statements and likewise, you can also add those here. And this is for the intelligent keyword classifier JSON file. So basically these things are set by default and if you want to save it in a different location, you can simply update up, up, up update the value here and all these are the endpoints related to the OCR and the machine learning models the classification form extractor um, depending on what you are using uh, you will have these values here so if you have your own um, machine learning model hosted in AI center you can convert that to a public model and get that endpoint and update in the configuration file and down here these are some settings and uh, you need to remember that these settings will also get overwritten by the assets because the same setting will be the available under assets so that it can be much more easier to configure than changing the config file you can simply go to the assets and change it um, and then so basically these things are used for controlling the flow whether you want to perform the classification all the time or whether you want to perform the validation all the time or whether you want to skip the training for the classifier and the extractor and this is another important one so this target file key this name the target file is the value that we will be looking at when we are getting the transaction item from the queue so in the queue under specific content you should have this name so that the workflow will look at this particular key and get the document path from the queue and uh, this is the queue that will be used for the document understanding framework so you can have your own names and uh, have your own queue path in the orchestrator folder path 
and update them accordingly. Um, so from the settings sheet, this is one important setting that you need to remember and you need to update these if needed. So those are the important settings here. And under constants, here it's all about the default execution attempts, uh, digitized attempts and all these basic settings that's needed to control the execution and control the exceptions. And the rest will be all log messages. So usually um, we had log messages um, hard coded in the code itself. But here in the document understanding framework, we have those log messages defined in the, the configuration file. So it's easy to change. So these things will be used along with its um, activity like for example this classification action title is used with the uh, creation of the classification action so that activity will use uh, these uh, configuration settings likewise all the other activities activities like digitization um, resuming and uh, data extraction these things will use these log messages according and this lock file is actually for the JSON files we have for the classifiers it's mainly used when you are performing the training so more information about those things we will look at once we get into the workflows and when we look at each and every component individually but for the understanding of the config file, just remember that these things are used for the handling of the JSON file and to make sure it is updating properly. Then comes the assets. So all these settings were there in the uh, settings sheet as well, right over here. And uh, so we just need to create the assets and update the values accordingly and provide the orchestrator asset uh, folder path. And this also includes the API key for document understanding and the other settings, like whether you need to skip the classification training or whether you want to always perform the extraction instead of automatically checking and sending only the items that require manual verification. So all those things are customizable and these are the same settings you see here. So what happens here is once you provide the asset, the value available in the asset will get, will be used across the config file for these uh, settings. So those are the basic uh, sheets. From here onwards, this is very specific to the different document types we are using. So that's why we have one sheet for invoices and another for receipt. So invoice and receipt are the two document types that's given to us by default from the framework. So basically the recommendation here is if you have uh, multiple document types like bank statements, purchase orders, it's, it's a good idea to have a separate sheet for those as well. So let's see why we have a separate sheet for each document type. So starting from the invoices, here we have a set of log messages that, that are used when processing invoices. So this includes certain uh, important messages like what you see over here. So basically it's, it's the log messages used for um, certain validations and the other thing is um, so when when processing these documents we also need to validate the data so when validating is not just we are looking at the confidence confidence is good to have but we should not rely on the confidence when we extract the data we always need to cross check whether the extracted information is correct so in a scenario where we have invoices to process, we can always look at 
what are the mandatory fees that needs to be extracted and what are the mandatory column fees that needs to be extracted same way what are the important fields that you will be using to validate a certain field like for example if you if you want to validate the total so you you get the total as a separate field but as a part of the cross validation you can use few other fields to validate like the tax amount shipping charges and discount so combination of all these will give you the total so that should match as a part of the validation so this is just one example you can have multiple validations like this so when you define all those things here it is easy to perform the validation in the workflow and also you can easily customize your validation logics so what we have done here is so they have you they have done some validation steps by default so we will look at the workflow how it is uh, when we get into that but in the config file this is how it is done so here we have a option for subtotal additions so basically what we are saying here is uh, we have the tax amount shipping charge and the discount so here we are saying each field present in the list here will be added to the subtotal to compute the total so that's how the cross validation is performed so you have the total and for the subtotal you will be adding these to see whether that total matches to the total that you extracted so then you can easily cross validate so this is just for one field if you have multiple fields like that depending on your use case you can always add those things here and use that in your workflows for the validation and likewise, so that is the cross validation. Likewise, you can also check uh, what are the mandatory fields that you need to have. So in any document, when you extract the information, you will have a set of mandatory fields. So you need to check whether, the, whether those fields have the values extracted. So once you define it here, you can perform that easily. And you can always add or remove same applies for the columns and the other thing we need to remember is the confidence fields so basically what this means is if you check here list of fields which will be checked versus a specific confidence threshold all new entries must have the confidence okay all these confidence fields will be used against a confidence level defined here so you can see it here so for the date you have a specific confidence for the shipping address you have another so it is not really mandatory to have a single confidence level throughout the document so you can have separate confidence levels for most important fields and uh, for the other phase, you can have a lower confidence level where, where the fields are not really important. Um, so this also applies to the mandatory fields. So depending on your scenario, uh, if you have such important fields, you can define those here and you can also define their respective confidence levels. So you can check and validate the accuracy and uh, the other confidence fields so this is mainly for the other fields uh, where you will be using a lower confidence as you see over here so this is a very important thing to remember um, when you are doing a document understanding a solution you need to have a proper confidence levels defined for the important fields and for the unwanted or the low priority phase you can have a low confidence level so this way you can easily manage how many documents that gets automatically verified and what are the documents that require manual verification like for example if you have a field that is not very much important 
but it has a lower confidence and you are checking against a higher confidence threshold, it may not be really needed to send those documents for manual verification because that field is not important. So those things, those are the things that are actually handled by this approach. So the same concept applies for the receipts as well here. So in the receipts, we have a set of log messages and then the same concept follows. Uh, you have the set of fields, you have the mandatory fields and the confidence fields. So this is how the config file is defined. So I'm repeating again. So the main important settings you see here in the setting sheet are these uh, highlighted in yellow and this one. And in the assets, you have the basic configurations and in here this is where you have all the important things so depending on your use case you can keep adding and removing stuff from this configuration and this is exactly what we are going to use in the validation flow for each document type so make sure you understand this part very well and follow the same thing for each document type and make sure to add a new sheet when you have a separate document type other than invoice or receipt so that you can easily replicate the same thing so i hope this gives the understanding on how the configuration file looks like and how you should prepare this configuration file for a document understanding project because this is uh, one of the parts where I heard that people are a bit confused. So I hope this will be um, helpful. And if you have any questions regarding the configuration file and how to set it up, feel free to uh, add a comment or reach out to me directly. And I'm happy to help on those things. And in the next video, we will start looking at the actual workflow starting from the framework will take each component like the digitization classification extraction and likewise we will look at each component in more detail and i'll explain uh, things in more detail like how to configure those what are the best practices and likewise so that's it for this video thank you so much for listening and uh, i'll see you soon in another video